Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ask Mike tonight. I am joining you all the way from the beautiful island of St. Lucia on a morning mission, spreading this word all across the Caribbean. And we have our guest, of course, I think he's in Canada this evening. This is the third installment of our mentorship program with Michael Leachin, who you may know from multiple business ventures over many, many, many years, including uh, the one that most Jamaicans know, NCB, National Commercial Bank, the largest bank in Jamaica. He is the chairman of Portland Holdings as well, and many other ventures, including uh, too many to mention. Let's just leave it at that, all of which has made him uh, arrive upon the Forbes billionaires list, which is no easy feat. And so he has dedicated some time to mentoring some of our young Caribbean people, especially those entrepreneurs. I'm looking through the list tonight of our five mentees for this evening, and I see a lot of people who are or want to be or are planning to be entrepreneurs who want to make an impact in the world and who would love to have an opportunity to get some advice from one of Jamaica's uh, wealthy and most well-known successful businessman, Michael Leachin. They've come up with some thought-provoking questions for him in this, the third of our four Ask Mike series. So with no, with a, with no further ado, let me welcome our guest of honor this evening, Michael Leachin. Kalila, good seeing you again. Yes, you got enough partying <laughs> last week. Yes, we were. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you had a grand old time. It was fantastic that uh, on Wednesday night. Yes, indeed. So just a few days ago. Are you back in Canada now or are you still I'm in back in I'm back in Canada. Yeah, you look nice and warm and cozy in your sweater. <laughs> all right. Well, before we go to our very first mentee, uh, what are we supposed to do now? <laughs> Yes, okay, weekly webinars, master classes, and more. <clears throat> Let's learn a little bit more about the money mission. What do the world's richest people all have in common? I'll give you the top five from the Forbes rich list and let's see if you can figure it out. Number one is Bernard Arnault, founder of LVMH, Louis Vuitton, Moet Hennessy. Number two, Elon Musk, co-founder of Tesla and SpaceX. Three is Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon. Four, Larry Ellison, co-founder of tech giant Oracle. And number five is Warren Buffett, founder of Berkshire Hathaway. So it should be pretty obvious, right? They all founded or co-founded major companies. They're all entrepreneurs. Jeff Bezos famously founded Amazon out of his garage in 1994. Elon Musk has co-founded six companies, including Tesla. Warren Buffett is perhaps the world's most famous investor, but he also founded the investment firm Berkshire Hathaway. So without a doubt, entrepreneurship is one of the major keys to wealth creation. For the world's richest man, Bernard Arnault, this also means generational wealth. All five of his children work at LVMH. Now, if this is what you envision for yourself, your first step is simply to get started. Bring that business idea to reality with Business Startup Basics. In this Money Mission webinar, corporate attorney and business accelerator Chantal Simpson tells you everything you need to know to set up your business legally. Now, you already missed the live, but the replay is now available. The link is in the description. Let's get this money. Welcome back, welcome back. Well, we have our mentees on standby, waiting very patiently to get their questions in. So the first person I'm going to introduce this evening is Vinton Roberts. And Vinton is a dedicated software developer with a passion for innovation. As the creator of Tradesmen Factory app, he has spearheaded a platform that lists Jamaican tradesmen based on their skill set and location. Good evening, Vinton. Good evening, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Well, Michael Leachin. Vinton, yes, please meet you. you. Yes. <laughs> well, you take it away. What would you like to ask Mike? Okay, let me go right into it. All right, there is this famous quote that says, if you want to go far, go with others. If you want to go fast, go alone. 
So with that in mind, my first question is, when you're forming business alliances or partnerships, what rule or guide do you use? Uh, Vinton, a, a partnership is, is, is a relationship, right? Yes. And when it comes to really relationships, there, there is a framework that I'd like to share with you that is most important, whether it's a relationship with your children, your parents, your partners, uh, your community, if this, these four traits will be relevant. Mm -hmm. Number one, there must be integrity. Yes. Number two, there must be intelligence in how decisions are made. Not mm -hmm. just because I'm bigger than you, I'm right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or in Jamaica, I just heard a new term, wrong and strong. You double down on wrong. <laughs> yes. Right? Number three, there must be passion in the relationship. And number four, there must be alignment. So yes. irrespective of the relationship you're trying to foster, all four of those characteristics must be present. Okay. If one is absent, the relationship isn't going to work. Okay. Then there's another one for you. Mm -hmm. Uh you should look for people who have their PhD. Okay. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're poor, hungry, and driven. And you don't have to be figuratively poor to be yes. to, to be to have that attitude. Yes. It's an attitude of being hungry and driven. Yes. You can be wealthy and still be. Uh, hungry, hungry and driven. And driven so yes. you want to look for people to be beside you who are poor, hungry, and driven. Loyalty is also important yes. because when you will eventually get into situations that are unpleasant, it always happens, and you want to absolutely know, Vinton, that when you look beside you, your partner is right there. Yes. Through thick, and more, more importantly, through thin, thin. <laughs> So those are some of the character traits that I would say should make sure that, that you are on side of. Yes. And people who are positive and optimistic. Yes, right? generally. Yes. Generally speaking. Yes. So so you're saying that as long as those all those four are intact, then the partnership would be viable. Think about think about it, Vinton. Who do you have your best relationship with? Would I I guess the I would guess to say your mommy. Or my wife, yes. <laughs> or, or your wife, right? Yes. Number one, is there integrity in the relationship? Yes, there is. Number two, is there intelligence is how decisions are made? Or do you, do you say to your wife, me is a man, therefore, shut up. Is that what you do? <laughs> no, not at all. Exactly. Uh, we, we, Numbers, we collaborate. You collaborate. Number three. Yes. Is there passion between the two of you? Not, not, the, yes. time, not, not, not the obvious passion. <laughs> <laughs> but just yes. passion to do things together. Yes. Right? Yes. And no, number four, is there alignment? Yes. So all four are, are there, present, right? Yes. Think about those relationships that did not work. Just, just think of one relationship that didn't work. Yes. And I suggest that just one was absent. Yes, that's true. No, that Intelligence. Yes. Yeah. So now you know what it takes to have a good relationship and what you have to do to, to bring your part to the relationship. Yes. Okay, thanks. I'm um, very insightful. So when it comes to once those are intact, when you my next question would be when you're actually at the point where you're seeking investor. Because um, for example, with my app that I'm that I have created, the Chosen Factory app. I will eventually reach that point where I would need investors for the business. So my question is, what guide or what rule do I use to get investors? Is there is there like a some sort of a skill or is what what's the what's the rule or the guide? Uh, <laughs> you you have to be able to sell. Yes. Right. And therefore, you have to be able to uh, infuse. Uh, confidence mm -hmm. in the people you want to have confidence in you. Yes. 
So you have to be able to infuse confidence in those you want to invest in you. Mm -hmm. So therefore, <clears throat> you have to demonstrate uh, uh, mastery of what it is you do. Mastery. Yes. You have to be able to articulate <clears throat> mm -hmm. your mastery. Articulate it with passion. Yes. And you have, to be, you have to be able to demonstrate that your whatever you're selling mm -hmm. uh, is relevant to society in some way, yes. right? So once you can demonstrate mar mastery, you can uh, show relevance to society, mm -hmm. and you can develop confidence by virtue of your passion. Yes, right. Then the job is. And uh, the, the, the job is nearly done. But the, the big part is getting access to the right people. Yes, that's true. That is a challenge for most of us, getting mm -hmm. access. So, you know, you have to think about it, Vinton. You have access is something you just, that it's not just going to happen by accident. You yes, have to be strategic in yes. getting access. Strategic. Yes. Defining who you want and mm -hmm. find, you know, you know, uh, Vinton, people say there are six degrees of separation between everybody in the world, <laughs> right? That's not true. I think yeah. you can, when you meet someone, you can find there are no more than two or three degrees of separation. So you can always find nodes of commonality. Yes, that's right? true. Right? So if you know where, who you want to access, you can mm -hmm. always find and you, you start off with someone who is close and mm -hmm. then you find a node of co co of, of commonality, commonality yes right and then you you you, you let, let you show that demonstrate to that person who has access to the one you really yeah. want yeah. mastery commitment passion and relevance yes and once you can do that that person who whom you have access to access to will uh will, 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 will if you can make that pe person feel feel the confident yes. right is that is what they will they will they, 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 they uh message that will be given that's true so so not only do you have to concentrate on the words of what you're saying the words mm -hmm. you're delivering but how are you making people feel because the feeling is what will be much more memorable over the long run than yeah, the content true. of your words yes, that's true that's true um, yeah, that, that's that's very helpful because a lot of times um, you find that you may have the technical knowledge, you may have the skill, but when it comes to actually imparting that passion that is inside you to others, then that is where sometimes the challenge comes in, where persons may not be able to make the connection with you and what you're selling or the business. So that was very good. So, so Vinton, just to summarize in terms of the framework that you can yes. remember, mm -hmm. whenever you have a project, any project, yes. any project, this is just a general framework now, including accessing cash, capital, right? Yes. Uh, you have to have a strategy, mm -hmm. right? You have to yes. have an execution plan, mm -hmm. and you have to have an advocacy plan. Yes. In any project you're doing, mm -hmm. you have to have a strategy, yes. execution plan, and an advocacy plan. Yes. So, for you, so, so that you don't forget it. What's the first letter of the word strategy? Yes. <laughs> Execution. E. Advocacy. A. So in everything you do, think mm -hmm. I need a C plan. Yes. S E A plan. Okay. Yes. Yes. That's great. All right. You have been very um helpful and very insightful, and I'll take this with me wherever I go. Thanks again for having me. Thanks, Kalila. Vinton, best of luck to you, my friend. Thanks much, sir. Thanks much. You are welcome, Vinton. Thank you so much. And Mr. Leachin, the SCA principle always comes in handy. Strategy, execution, advocacy. I love that you reiterate it for us every single time. Well, let's go to our second mentee for this evening. His name is Stefan Morrison. Stefan is a corporate attorney who started his legal career helping companies raise money privately and publicly from investors. But he's now on the other side of that transaction as the founder of a brand new company that's expected to launch in October of this year. 
Stefan and his team are developing a new tourism product to provide the best way to experience community tourism in neighborhoods across Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean. Good evening, Stefan. Hi, good evening, Kalila. Thank you very much for that introduction. So take it away. What would you like to ask Mike? All right, first of all- Good evening, Stefan. Good evening, Mr. Leachin. Thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. My pleasure. So my question um, piggybacks off what you were just talking about, access. So when you do have that access, what is the, and you do, you get yourself in the room, in those meetings, what's the area that um, you should be pitching or what area should we be focusing on when you're speaking to private lenders as opposed to equity partners that will speak directly to the private lender, what information is most important to them? You've, you've been in both those, those situations. What information is most important to the private lender? Yes, right? what should you convey? Focus okay. that time on conveying. Um, you know, again, I, you're a lawyer, so you, are, you, 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 you make decisions based on frameworks. The law is a body of frameworks, right? Yes. So I'm going to leave a framework here with you. Uh, every professional, Stefan, lawyer, doctor, Indian chief, uh, every business has to focus on the following three uh, characteristics. So when you're when you're if you're you're presenting, you're advocating to raise funds, you have to demonstrate these three characteristics. Number one, how are you differentiated in the marketplace? Why should I? have confidence in Stephen Morrison, right? Because Stephen Morrison is the person I'm investing in. I'm investing in a person, okay? So why should I have uh, confidence in Stephen M Morrison? That's the first, that's the overarching question. Well, if I were Stephen Morrison, I would say, you know what, Mr. Leachin, you should have confidence in me, sir, because what I do is completely differentiated in the marketplace. I am the pink cow in the flock of brown cows. Okay? You got it. That's the first thing. I'm differentiated. And here are the reasons why I am differentiated. Number two, my reputation, Mr. Leachin, my reputation. My reputation, and here's my here's what my reputation is. You can check. Okay? So every in the, every professional, every business has to be focused on being differentiated their reputation, and thirdly, uh, Mr. Leachin, you're pitching me, Stefan. Mr. Leachin, uh, here is how, what I am, uh, uh, here, here is, firstly, my services, here are how my services are 100% relevant to you and can enhance your life. In other words, you have to address my needs articulately. So it's not what you want to sell, is what my needs are that is relevant to me. So if you think about, if you always think about those three areas, those three things that I just mentioned, uh, Stefan, differentiation, here's what I'm different. Here's my reputation, Google me, or call this person, call that person that you know, right? They, they'll tell you who I am. And thirdly, uh, Mr. Leachin, here are the areas in which my services will address your needs 100%, sir. And then you get into, into it. So those are the three various headings. Any business, same things, same three uh, characteristics that each, every business should be enhancing every day. Because over time, Stefan, uh, they become commodities. So you always have to be refreshing all three. So um, as I piggyback to that, to that question, do you have any tips about creating a winning environment when you do get those meetings? Um, for example, if you're struggling to meet somebody in person, is that something that you should ensure that that meeting is an in-person meeting and not go for the phone meeting if, if, if they're too busy? Is there some things that are your most when you are pitching, 
these things, you must create this environment for you to have that winning in, um, result. So again, it's communication, right? Again, I'm going to default to framework again, right? So when you're pitching, all you're doing is communicating, right? Once once you get the access, so it's now. So let's let's look at the the the, the, the hierarchy of uh, communication in terms of the worst to the best. The worst form of communication is email. The next worst form of email, text, etc. The next worst form of communication is telephone. The next worst form, or, or, or if you would say the next best, right? Or, 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 right? The next worst form of communication is video conferencing. And the best form of communication is face to face. You, you, that's how people feel natural. Right, because they can see your whole body, they can read your body language, you can it's not as formal, you're not really as stiff, right? Uh, and you can just be jovial, you can be who you are, you can be you can show who Stefan Morrison is when you're face to face. Also, Stefan, remember, uh, people like to have not uh to, to when you communicate, you want to be as natural as possible. So just always remember, how do I speak to my brothers? Eh? How do I speak to my brothers? Do I speak to them in a business-like way? Huh? So, yeah. so that, that once you once you have that approach, it frees you, right? It makes you free. You do, you don't have to speak in uh in a way that your perception is that is more corporate. Oh, no, I've never been I've never been that way. Uh, Stefan, I would say what you want to do is to be the best Stefan Morrison that you can be, as natural as possible. And you, you take that in any environment. And that's, that is what will make you differentiated because you're just natural. People can, can, can will trust you because they, they believe you, because you're, so, so, you're natural. Thank you very much, Mr. Lutrin. I appreciate your advice and the time that you've given me. My pleasure. Good luck here. All right. Thank you very much, Stefan, for all of that. So I think we're at the point of our first break. Let me see. Yes, we are indeed. So Mr. Legion, we're going to take our first break and come right back with our next three mentees. <laughs> Attention. Are you struggling with money? Trying to figure out how to pay off your credit cards? Are you ready to learn how to invest and grow your money? I'm Khalila Reynolds, the Money General, and I'm on a mission to help you get better with money. Join me inside the Money Mission community where I'll teach you how to manage money, make more money, and annihilate bad debt. Click the link in the description to sign up for your basic or premium membership. Let's get this money. I took Kalila's Investing for Beginners Masterclass because I heard there was an IPO launching and I just jumped right into it. It helped me to do uh, how to invest and the steps you can go to uh, achieve your goals as well. If it is that y'all are interested in learning about investments or anything, I really suggest that you hop on that class, that masterclass, because the way that I look at money now and saving, I don't. I look at it different now. Kalila, you are the reason Mark and Brown started investing. Learn the basics about stock market investing today. Investing for Beginners is available on demand or with a premium membership to the Money Mission community. Join now at moneymission.mn.co. The link is in the description. Welcome back. And just to let you know as well, so I saw a comment from Nicholas who said, Good evening, everyone. Thank you for, thank you, Kalila and Mr. Leachin for sharing the <laughs> principles PDF. If you were here during round two, you would recall that Mr. Leachin said that he had compiled a document called Principles. Well, your wife actually did it, your wife, Sonia, because she's listened to you with all your acronyms over the years, the SCA and 
I can't even remember all of them. Your, your keys to wealth. There's so many of them. And so she's compiled them all into a PDF <laughs> called Principles. And I've put the link in the comments for you to go and get your copy of Michael Leachin's Principles. It's not a book, but it could be a book. The framework is there for it to be uh, converted and developed into a book. So it's, it's a PDF with a, you know, a list and a compilation of all of these wise sayings that we've been getting over the past several months and over the past many years by Mr. Lee Chin. So the link is right there. You can go download MLC. That's what we call you. Anybody else call you that? MLC? Yeah, you know, that's what they refer to me. They don't call me that into my face. They just refer to me. <laughs> but you know, so <laughs> if the word gets around, the download principles by Michael Lee Chin. All right, so let's get to our next mentee. Let me see who it is. That is going to be Calvin. So Calvin Wright is the next person who is ready and waiting to ask Mike. Calvin is the founder of Grad Quo Educational Services and its nonprofit subsidiary CSSP, that's short for Caribbean Summer Schools Program. Calvin is committed to transforming education in the Caribbean. So Calvin, it is your turn to ask Mike. Thank you so much, Kalila. So just at that, I'm also uh, wrapping up a PhD in finance right now in the US. And so I'm also involved in education, just academically, but also as a business. And so one of the biggest challenges, I think, in education, particularly in funding for education, is just is just that, is its funding, right? And trying to align the interests of donors with nonprofit initiatives. And so my first question would be, you know, uh, Mr. Leachin, how do we, as an educational consultant, for example, strategically align nonprofit initiatives with for-profit ones in order to attract donors? And so I think that is most relevant in spaces like education and research, where you know it benefits us as a whole, you know, in Jamaica. And so I think anything that benefits Jamaica benefits all of us. But then there's also an issue of funding and resources are scarce. And so any advice on how to align the interests of you know for nonprofit initiatives with for profit ones? Well, I guess uh, you have to look the, the obvious uh, method, the obvious path would be to first find foundations that are focused primarily on education. Right? Uh, I think, uh, Calvin, I think you set me off here <laughs> because you know, I'm going to give you an <laughs> example. The NCB Foundation. Uh, its, fo its focus is on education, right? And what we do, we take 1% of our profits every year and put it to the foundation, right? And over the last 20 years, we have, we have uh, impacted over 200,000 people. So we educate, you see, if as a corporate donor, we, you, one has to define their philanthropic philosophy. If not, you'll be just giving money all over the place without any rhyme or reason, and you will not make an impact. Therefore, uh, we, we have decided that education, because education is really the enabler and facilitator for growth and human development, right? And prosperity and fulfillment. It's, it's a passport. So that is where we have always focused on. So the, in terms of your mm -hmm. first job will be to just do the work, and find out, get a universe of companies whose <clears throat> foundation would be focused on education, given that that is your area of interest. Mm -hmm. So just to, to follow up on that, I think that, that's great advice. So that's something I personally tried to work on. So just to follow up on that, so what, what is your advice? The person I tried to work on, what do you mean? What? So making sure that I have a universe of companies that whose interests also align with the interests of the business at heart. And so the business that I, I'm interested in is, is helping high school students conduct research at the frontier of many different disciplines, right? And so in doing that, though, I've experienced failure. And so my follow-up question is, you know, for example, you mentioned the NCB Foundation. We did actually <laughs> reach out to that foundation. But then, you know, when you experience failure with something like that, it's very difficult to kind of pull out a balance sheet, an income statement, and kind of show numbers. And so it's really, to your previous point, talking to somebody else, selling a vision. And so how do you, you know, at what point do you give up, you know, with non-profit initiatives? Because at the end of the day, I think non-pecuniary returns to investments 
can only do so much and the development story matters only so much and to the extent that it, to, to the extent that it benefits you know people in financial terms and so in terms of failure how do you navigate um that that environment so firstly the question the first question i think was how do you know when to give up yep <laughs> that is that is the first question right mm -hmm. so <laughs> you may not have any choice in that you may run out of money right so you have to give up mm -hmm. yeah or if you, if you still have some money calvin uh you just have to go go back to am i being you know i may be relevant to myself i may think i'm relevant mm -hmm. i may think that what i am doing is relevant right mm -hmm. uh but if i'm if i'm if i have seen a hundred people and they tell me the same thing probably i should reassess what i'm doing or, or probably i should use a different approach right uh so so the, 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 in terms of the first question how do you know when to stop when you're out of money or on reassessing what you're doing it may be that it is an interest to you personally but mm -hmm. you, you you haven't find alignment with cost uh with prospective investors mm -hmm. then then you have to really pivot what was the second question again so just dealing with failure in general. So you dealing, know, dealing with funding failure. game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. Dealing with failure. All right. Uh, you know, I have coined a term. Okay. Uh, Calvin, the rhinoceros. When you think of a rhinoceros, what comes to mind? Like a wild animal. A wild animal. How about uh, uh, the first characteristic, thick skin? True. Eh? Yeah. Second characteristic, mm -hmm. always has his head down. Third characteristic, it is charging forward. Mm -hmm. Those are the three characteristics that make a rhino successful. Thick skinned, head down, charges forward right how do you deal with failure mm -hmm. be thick-skinned head down and keep moving forward calvin definitely no i i agree with that um in other words calvin, on your point calvin mm -hmm. rhino mode rhino mode All rhino right. mode okay <laughs> No, I appreciate but, that. But, but, sure. but, Calvin, but Calvin, you have to be sure, uh, you have to be sure that you, you're not going down a road that is of no relevance to anyone. Mm -hmm. Right? It may be relevant yeah. to you, mm -hmm. but your addressable market, there's no, it's not relevant to anybody. Mm -hmm. So then, then, no. then you, you, you take your talents and apply it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. To the best bit of. <laughs> uh so on the topic of relevance uh in your own work and just in business how relevant do you think research is particularly now in an age of ai and you know in developing countries like jamaica in the financial space even in the educational space like how important is research uh just to you or how relevant well who is doing the research that's the first thing who is doing the research and for instance if I read research on, if I want, if I were in New York, say, right, mm -hmm. and I wanted to invest in Jamaica, what would I, what would I do? I'd look at the World Bank report on Jamaica, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and if I read the World Bank report on Jamaica, I'd look at the GDP growth for the last 40 years and say, my gosh, this country has not grown significantly i would look at the per capita income and say my gosh the per capita income is low right my gosh my gosh my gosh and those are those are data those are facts mm -hmm. now you probably would overlook jamaica right now mm -hmm. let me give you a different perspective suppose you have a framework that goes like this when i invest i'm looking to create mm -hmm. wealth that's why I'm investing. Mm -hmm. And to create wealth, uh, there are three things that are precondition, three preconditions that must be present to create wealth. 
Number one, there must be a difference between the perception and reality. Because only when you have that difference, that delta, can you get the knowledge? Mm -hmm. Do you have the knowledge arbitrage? And then you can create wealth. Number two, there must be inefficiencies. Only when there are inefficiencies can you create wealth. If, if something is already mm -hmm. efficient and you're trying to tweak it from the seventh to the eighth decimal place, you're not going to create any wealth. And number three, there must be a lack of capital. Because only mm -hmm. when there's a lack of capital can you create wealth. In other words, the flip side of that is also true. If you want to destroy wealth, Mm -hmm. Go away, do what everybody else does. In other words, there's no dif dif delta between perception and mm -hmm. reality. Everybody knows the same. Mm -hmm. If you want to destroy wealth, uh, go, do uh, look for go go to places that are already efficient. And if you want mm -hmm. to destroy wealth, go into areas where there's lots of money around. Into going into that area or those areas. All right. In other words. Mm -hmm. The flip side of what I said initially about in terms of you people reading the World Bank uh, report mm -hmm. and assessing Jamaica and said Jamaica is, Jamaica is ugly as far as uh, wealth creation is concerned, investing is concerned. Mm -hmm. But with the, with, with the preconditions I just mentioned, perception versus reality, that delta, there must be mm -hmm. that delta. Secondly, there must be inefficiencies. And thirdly, there must be lack of capital. Those are ugly characteristics right so mm -hmm. you should wealthy people don't look they don't they go they don't go hunting for pretty they go hunting for ugly and make ugly pretty that's where they create wealth so if you read the world Bank report <laughs> you would be thinking that mm -hmm. way so you mm -hmm. asked me a question about data be careful of data okay mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, be careful of data, but I mean, in the same way, they say cash is king. I guess data nowadays is also king, you know, as it relates to the like, um optimizing processes and businesses, that kind of stuff. Well, well um, again, again, it depends on if you're talking, we're talking about entrepreneurialism here, mm -hmm. right? Entrepreneurialism. So what the, the mm -hmm. best data is for you to go and speak to customers. You do it yourself. Sure. You understand. Mm -hmm. You look. You would go into areas that you have an interest, and you have. You can go deep, so that you yourself mm -hmm. can be fully committed to it, right? Because you mm -hmm. know for sure, right? Because you have been interacting with the customers. You know. So, mm -hmm. um, you, any data you can pull from, uh, from any from a, a, a web uh, from the internet. Everybody knows that that data or those data, mm -hmm. right? But we yeah, yeah. talk more yep. entrepreneurialism here, you know, yep. mm -hmm. and finding an area that you can create wealth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, also, as, as I'm talking, I'm thinking, you, to create wealth, mm -hmm. uh, you need to practice what is called the three Ps, which is you have three to predict. Ps. You have to predict something, take a view of the future. Number two, that's the first P, predict. The second P is you have to plan mm -hmm. for your prediction. And number three, you have to persevere with your plan. Okay, where are you going to get, you gonna get data from if you predict? There's no data invariably. Huh? Okay. True. But everybody who created wealth did PPP. Mm -hmm. They predicted, they planned, and they persevered. They persevered. Mm -hmm. So be careful. Don't just say data, data, data. Go fall back to mm -hmm. frameworks that are relevant to creating wealth because that's what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. and Definitely. Yeah, no, uh, I think that wraps up all my questions. So great, you know, just isn't to hear your advice on just research, educational space, nonprofit investing, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I really appreciate it. <laughs> so, 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 uh, Calvin, uh, Again, I said earlier, you have to be, you, you have to be unorthodox, unorthodox mm -hmm. in how you think, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I just leave it one with, 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 and to be unorthodox in how you think, you have to ask yourself the question: What's in my toolkit? Every day when I wake up, what do I burnish off? Mm -hmm. so I'm sharp, mm -hmm. right? 
here mm -hmm. are the four things in my toolkit. Every day, I wake yeah. up, uh, Calvin, I shower off, I towel dry, put cologne on, nice white shirt on, four assets in my toolkit. Number one, mm -hmm. a fresh pair of eyes and ears. Mm -hmm. Number two, a problem-solving attitude. Mm -hmm. Number three, a connecting of the dots approach. Mm -hmm. I connect dots. And anybody can connect the easy ones. Two follows one. B follows A. How about yeah. connecting and, and uh, a concept you learned in chemistry with business, with HR in mm. business? How about doing that? Mm. That's a little bit more more uh, difficult. Do Atoms, you know, yeah, yeah. Eh? Like we're all connected somehow, you know, I get it. Therefore, these connecting disparate dots will require you to think, and most people don't think. So I connect dots. And fourthly, the fourth asset in my toolkit is I align with people. People. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Leachin. Uh, that was super helpful to learn. Good luck All to right. you, Calvin. Thank you All so the best much. here. Thank, Thank you, you Calvin. Care. I hope you got lots of lots of value from that. So our next mentee is Giovanni Taylor. Giovanni is the logistics chief of Pepsi Cola Jamaica, and he's also an avid investor and co-founder of Ten Tears Innovation, which is a business management company. He aspires to be a venture capitalist. Interesting. So let's introduce Giovanni Taylor. Giovanni, where is he? There he is. Hi. Good what afternoon. Would you like to Good night, night, brother. Good afternoon. Giovanni. Good afternoon, Mr. Leachin. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity. You're, you're welcome, Giovanni. All right. So my first question to you, Mr. Leachin, is what strategies do you utilize when choosing a short-term investment versus a long-term investment? What What is your definition of short-term? Um, something that you know that <clears throat> will... You don't plan to stay there for a long time. What's a long time? Term? What's tenure? Five five years. Five years? Five so years. what's my definition? Sorry, what sort of question is, what strategy do I use to determine short-term investing? Yeah. Uh, um, short versus this strategy is yeah. long-term investing. So, so uh, I'm a long-term investor, right? I'm a long-term investor. Uh, therefore, I look at, uh, when, when I do anything, I, I have to be able to see a, a runway at least 10 years. 10 years. Right? At least 10 years. A runway at least 10 years. Because a lot can happen in five years. For instance, over the last five years, from 2019 to 2024, what has happened? We had in the intervening years, we had COVID. COVID. Right? So there are always, there are always intervening events. To ambush you if your time frame is too short. Short. Correct. The long when when you elongate your time frame, then you have time to recover from intervening events that maybe that are that are exogenous to your plans. Right. So the longer your time frame, the more more you're, you you you'll think about uh you you'll think well first you'll think you'll think differently when your decision making tree Giovanni will be a lot different when you think long-term versus short-term, right? But if you're thinking long-term and you're looking for uh, something, uh, an, an, area, an area to get into, you have to, you have to make sure you're confident that that area you're thinking of getting into has strong long-term growth characteristics. And you have to be able to articulate why this area has strong long-term growth characteristics. So, if you want to be, 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 if you want to make sure, the first rule of investing. Period is don't lose your principal. Right, don't lose your capital, and the way not to lose your capital, Giovanni, is to understand what it is you're investing in. Understand that word. Understand is key to investing. So you buy assets that you understand, 
or you know someone that you're confident in who understands it and secondly you make sure that those few assets you buy are in strong long-term growth industries so it's a combination of owning high quality businesses in strong long-term growth industries uh that will give that will protect your capital because we will make mistakes in the business and when you make a mistake you want to know that the rising tide will bail out your mistakes well, so sure. always think twin it i'm investing a business but to make sure that i am confident that the industry within which this business is located is a, in a strong long-term growth mode it's a rising tide so why am i so confident in, that this industry is a rising rising tide so not only do you have to study the 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 particular company but you have to be confident about the particular industry within which that company is located it's both that will protect your capital okay all right very insightful um changed my mindset a little bit in in regards to short-term investments um there's a saying you know um the bigger the risk the greater the return but what are some investments that are that have limited risk with with a reasonable return over time uh again limited risk with reasonable return again let's yeah, yeah remember we went to the three p's yeah predict plan, plan and persevere. persevere so uh you have let, 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 you need a mechanism for predicting right you need a mechanism for predicting so one mechanism would be demographics right another mechanism would be uh I, i'll give you two areas in which i am particularly uh focused on uh the two areas would be uh the treatment of cancer oncology using nuclear uh, radio isotopes to treat cancer at the cellular level not just blast the body but going straight for the cancer cells and zap them and only those cells that's uh, it's called trt targeted radionuclide therapy which is which is what is now uh, uh displacing traditional chemotherapy and radiation external beam radiation therapy so that's one area because uh, the, the a strong long-term growth industry is cancer and uh, hence oncology, right? But you know, I have to look at within oncology, there are two types of, there are two modalities. Number one, external beam radiation, which is brutal, and chemotherapy, which is also brutal. But now there is, there is TRT, that uh, again is targeted as precision oncology, and that is every day there there's an increasing menu of cancers that are being treated with uh, medic with radioisotopes. So that's one area uh, that I am particularly interested in because I know by because of demographics, because of the bad food we eat, uh, etc. More and more cancer uh, will uh, pre prevail. It's a strong long-term growth industry. The second area. Uh, of growth uh, is the following. Every country would have signed up in Paris Accord 2015 or COP20 to become nuclear, sorry, become, to become carbon net zero by 2050. But to become carbon net zero, you need nuclear energy at the center of your energy mix. So the the typical the energy mix for countries today would be we could be described as a hub and spoke model at the hub you have fossil fuels that's today the spokes are renewables fossil fuels have some wonderful properties that like they're always on highly scalable and high energy dense but one big proper problem dirty okay. so we need to for man is there's an existential threat because of fossil fuels so what we need to do is remove that hub and replace it with another energy source with the same positive characteristics always on high energy dense and scalable but clean and the only such source is nuclear right so we know countries have signed up to be to a carbon net zero by 2050 countries and industries 
So th there is a shift happening now in terms of the energy mix. And you're just saying, whenever there is a shift in the dominant source of energy, there's also, uh, there's also a shift in economic power. So right now there's a shift happening. So there's All a right. shift ha happening in economic power right now. England became a superpower because of coal. Then Venezuela, uh, UAE, Saudi Arabia, United States, Canada, etc., Norway right. became uh, powerful because of fossil fuels. Right? So there's another shift away from fossil fuels to nuclear. So the question, sir, is that's a, that, that, that is an inevitable. That's not, there's no if, ands, or buts. It's an in, inevitable. So that's one way of predicting. It's an, in this case, it's a low risk. So I don't, but you start off by saying high risk, high reward. Being early in a space that's going to be pre predominant in the future, that's not high risk. It's very low risk. And that's, that's when you make a huge uplifting in, in, in value. So it's that, that risk reward, you just you don't, don't, be, don't be too pedantic about it or cliche about it. If you're early in a space and you buy high quality businesses, the, the, the underlying uh, tide will, will be huge, right? And we just lift your boat rapidly if you're early. So PPP, predict, plan, and persevere. I just gave you two examples. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Lee Chin. Um, this has really impacted my, my approach and mindset towards investing. And I, uh, I am now trying to be, I'm going to now try to be early going forward and predicting what's, 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 what's to come. So thank you predicting, so much. Predicting, planning for your prediction and? Persevering. Persevering. Thank you so much. I really appreciate my, it. My pleasure. Can't hear you, Kalila. Cesar, you're a real teacher, making sure that the student repeats what you said <laughs> <laughs> to ensure retention. Make sure you hear. It's like when you send picnic to, to, to shop. I said, what did I say? Rice, egg, and bread, mommy. <laughs> predict, <laughs> persevere. <laughs> no, 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 no. Say, get it right. Predict, plan, persevere. Predict, plan, and persevere. See, I need to go review principles. The link is in the chat, guys, to download a copy of Michael Leachin's principles. Oh, a lot of the nuggets that he's giving here are outlined in that document. So we have our final mentee for this evening. Finally, a woman. They left the woman for last. Her name is Moken Marseille, and she's on a mission to redesign the future of creative work and uplift Jamaica's creative economy. Her ultimate goal is to establish the first art and science tech city. That sounds very, very interesting. Hi, Moken, good evening. Hi, good evening, Kalila, and good evening, Mr. Lucien. I am- Moken, what a beautiful name. And Thank you, Moken. people of the sea. Eh? It means, it means people of the sea. People of the sea. It's a beautiful yes. name and also thank unique. You. Yes, thank you. I, like I've me. never heard of a Moken before. You're the first. Uh, are you, I'll probably only be the only first. Uh, <laughs> so my question is, um, so I recognize that there's a need for a top-down, a sit from a top-down approach in innovation. And uh, seeing as I want to design this city, how would you advise involving not only creative, but also the public and private sectors in shaping the future of creative work when there needs to be a, a complete fix on how we approach problem solving? So the question is, how would I advise what? How would you advise involving the not creative, just Not just the creative, but also the public and private sector in public shaping and private the future. Sector. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, firstly, the private sector is uh, returns driven, right? Mm -hmm. Private sector is returns driven. Uh, and the private sector uh, 
they, they, they like to minimize their risk. So, so things that are too new, right? Mm -hmm. They will be, they, they'll just tiptoe in. They won't go in. They won't dive in. They may throw okay. you some crumbs because mm -hmm. they, they, they're trying to minimize risk. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so to get development going in areas that, given that, given that you have developmental funds, public developmental funds, that would would be would be funds that are willing to take higher risk than the public, the private sector is willing to take, just to get. Okay a sector catalyzed, right? So, uh, the, so the question is, how would you advise involving not just the creative, but also the public? So I would firstly start off with finding development developmental funds uh, that are interested, that are that whose mandate would be aligned with mine. Mm -hmm. Right, that's the that would be I would think that would be the approach I would take. Private sector, mm, it's it's a, it's a long shot because that's a green <laughs> field and it's way out mm -hmm. there. It's way out there in right. terms of being able to uh, see cash flow coming back. Mm -hmm. But a development a developmental development fund organization would take a different perspective. Thank you for sharing that. I have a follow-up question. Um, as you mentioned before, um, whenever you want to make a change or innovation, there the calls for um, new ways of thinking. And when you're when you have such a big idea that not only requires um, capital but also a change in how people create and innovate, how do you? even start the journey of um, telling the story and capturing the hearts and minds of people when it's so far off in terms of what the vision is and how you can really um, make it happen. Well, that's advocacy now. That's advocacy. <laughs> and if you're looking at the continuum, the bookends, mm -hmm. right? You have you have chosen to go to the extreme of the bookend, which is distant, trying to oh. see make, let uh, have people see into the future. It becomes right. very intangible, right? Mm -hmm. It becomes very intangible. People have, will have difficulty doing that because there is no track record, right, of it being right. done, right? There is no track record, and we always like to know. So who did that before me? Or who that did right. that before you, right? Mm -hmm. Show me some track record, or show, get, tell me a reason that is very compelling, that I can feel it, see, tear, touch it, smell it. It is so compelling, okay. right? Uh, so it's it's if the, the more arcane, distant, intangible the idea is, mm -hmm. the more compelling you have to be to build confidence. Okay. So, so uh, Moken, if I were starting off as an entrepreneur, again, mm -hmm. I would not go so far out on the spectrum mm -hmm. that uh, I, I would be limiting the universe of people who would be interested, right, in investing in me. Mm -hmm. Right? I would be starting yeah. off I'll be starting off building a track record, but not okay. so far off on the continuum. I'll push Would that be your first node, your first node of connection in terms of finding the smallest idea that you have and then building from there to the exactly, business, the exactly, business so, exactly. So people can say, well, you, I, I've see, I can see uh, what uh, Moken is saying now. She has a track record. She, she pushed the envelope. Uh, initially, it was totally outside of the box, but not so outside of the box that became in, very intangible. I could see it, I could feel it, I could touch it. 
right? Okay. And she, she, she executed on it. So now mm -hmm. Mokin has a track. So now she can go one concentric, concentric circle more out on the continuum of intang okay. intangibility, right? So start with what's familiar and then build it, build it out. Exactly. Uh, okay. And not, not necessarily well, what is familiar. So you, not necessarily what is familiar to the point whereby you're going to be like everybody else. But but start right. with but but you, you have to be different, different for track record, mm -hmm. and you know where you want to go, right? Mm -hmm. But you have to start with baby steps, tangibility, tangibility, mm -hmm. but pushing the envelope, and then once you are successful at that, then you have the right to go back and say, look. Let's take the next step, which is a bigger step. Okay. Okay? Awesome. Thank you. I, I guess I'm on the right track then because I'm on my baby step one right now. <laughs> so it is perfect. Thank you for sharing these insights. Moken, really what yes. did you hear? What did you hear? I heard that you said that you need to develop a track record, right? Mm -hmm. So don't start from all the way up here. Build a track record with one, one, two, three, four things. So when you get to there and you're communicating with people, you can show them what you have done and that you can give them a compelling story and um, tell your vision in a, make it more tangible for them. Yes, Ms. Moken. Okay. That All right. It? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. All the best, Ms. Moken. Thank okay. You. I love it. I love how practical all the advice was this evening. I see a lot of people saying, Gems, awesome. There are a lot of comments. Inga says, Let's get this money. Peter Garden said, Bad so. Uh, whoop. <laughs> we have a lot of people respecting it. Nicola is saying the three Ps, 100. Carl says, great insights. <clears throat> Michelle says, wow. So a lot of people are having their mind blown, their minds blown this evening, Mr. Leachin, people who are being exposed to the principles for the first time. So we appreciate you coming until the next one, which is going to be in January, March, April, May. So probably around late May, early June will be the fourth of our four-part series with you. Thank you so much for your time once again. We really appreciate it. My pleasure, Kalila. And hopefully it was value add, added to our young entrepreneurs, uh, leaders of the future. Uh, and what you're doing is fantastic, Kalila. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you once again. And I hope to see you at Money Week later this year but we'll talk later <laughs> all right you're always be selling eh? <laughs> all right Kalina. well Thank the members you. always ask usually they ask because they're the ones who got you on the show to do ask mike remember it was on taking stock they asked you to do a mentorship and you said yes and then last time you were on they asked you for principles and you said yes and we provided it so this time it's my turn to ask oh, all, right. To okay. <laughs> all right okay all right kalila you take care here and you good too. luck to you Thank Blessings. you so much. Thank Bye, you so much. Awesome. I see some of you had questions in the chat as well. Um, make sure that you sign up for the next Ask Mike, which will, so it may be our last because when he committed, he said he would do at least four. So who knows? Maybe he decides to, to continue with it after the fourth one, but the fourth is what we have committed to. So make sure that you sign up for the next Ask Mike, get on the mailing list. And of course, download a copy of MLC's principles. The link is right there in the chat and I'm gonna put it in the description as well. well. Let me see here, I think I have a message. Yeah, thank you to all of our mentees who joined us this evening. Moken, Giovanni, Calvin, Stefan, Vinton, you guys asked some great questions and really brought out the practical experience from this one of Jamaica's most renowned businessmen. That's where we have to leave it. Thank you all once again. Remember to join the Money Mission community. The link is in the description. Tomorrow evening is taking stock. So I'll see you then at, actually, not me. We have a guest host tomorrow. Surprise, surprise. You'll find out who it is tomorrow at 8. Let's get this money.